Hello, and welcome to Buggy, religious nutbag and worshipper of crazy people, also known as Imperial Vizier Zorlok, the first boss of the Heart of Fear raid instance. For ten man normal of this fight, you will need one tank, two or three healers, and six or seven DPS whipping out that kung fu action, depending on how many healers you use. Personally, I recommend using three healers for this fight and sacrificing the DPS as damage can get insanely high here. So this is a two phase fight. In one phase, you must fight the boss as he swaps between platforms and in so doing swapping abilities that he uses. So when you start the fight, the center floor area gets covered in muck, which not only deals a minor amount of damage over time, but it also silences you. Bad muck. Bad. So, the boss will lift off and fly to one of three platforms, and you will need to follow him to the platform and get out of the muck as soon as you can. A few things to note. The boss seems to go either for the left or the right platforms for this first selection, usually leaving the one at the far back for last. While nobody is in melee range, he will start casting an ability called Song of the Empress. Basically, all this does is to make sure that you get somebody in melee range relatively soon or you die. Best to let the tank get into melee range first or he will pretty much one shot any other player. Don't worry too much about moving from platform to platform as you have more than enough time and you can even use movement increasing effects to help out, not to mention that the smog deals very little damage while you're in it. So let's start going through the abilities and how to handle them starting with the abilities that he will use for the entire fight, regardless of phase or platform. Inhale and Exhale. Inhale is a stacking buff, which the boss will cast on himself. Each stack increases the damage of the next exhale by 50%. You cannot stop the boss from doing this. Exhale selects a random raid member and starts channeling a weird yellow beam thing into them. The tank must come between the effective player and the boss, thereby intercepting the damage and saving the other person. Oh, what a hero you are, tank. Keep it up. Note that it deals reduced damage to the person who intercepts it, but it is still very high and should be taken by the tank. So, the more stacks of inhale he has before using exhale, the more damage exhale will do. So tanks, Watch his buff and use a cooldown if you have to. Dealing with inhale and exhale is especially easy if your tank is on the ball. That being an expression, don't worry, there's no mechanic involving balls in this fight. All the tank has to do is intercept the beam. However, you can make the tank's job much, much easier by stacking up behind the tank when possible. If you are all stacked up behind the tank, then they don't have to move and automatically intercept the exhale instantly. This provides no problem for ranged, and due to the boss's hitbox being so incredibly large, yeah, he's fat, Malay can stand behind the tank and still be able to damage him. Alright now, on to the specific platform abilities. There are three different platforms here, left, right, and directly ahead when looking at the boss. The boss will use a different ability on each platform, and will change platforms at about every 20% of his health, so he will move at 80% and 60% and so on. Now, as I said earlier, the first platform the boss chooses will usually be either the left one or the right one, as he tends to like saving the platform at the back for last. The platform he flies to they're random, however he will always fly to all three platforms and never repeat a platform. When looking at the boss on your left is the left platform. On this platform the boss will use an ability called attenuation, where he will start channeling attenuation and while he is channeling this, discs will start coming out of him. These discs deal substantial damage to anything they touch as they move around. The discs will ricochet off of walls and will sometimes split into two. Each one will go into opposite directions. There are several tricks with handling these discs. First off, you don't want to be too close or the discs will spawn on top of you and that is not nice. You don't want to be too far from the boss or you will get hit by ricochets and splits. 
So you want to be roughly in the middle between the boss and the walls. The next thing is that the discs spawn in a random pattern. If you see the patterns, then they are very easy to dodge. Basically, the pattern will always be a spiral and either allow for an easier time moving clockwise or anti-clockwise. It's a bit like an at sign that will sometimes be the right way around and sometimes flipped. So have your camera zoomed out a bit and looking from bird's eye view or looking down at your character from above. And this will make it easier to spot the pattern. This is the trickiest in terms of learning mechanic of the fight. So just remember you don't have to DPS or heal during this phase as it's nearly impossible to cast anything but instance. So just focus on dodging the discs and staying alive. When the discs are finished, you can stack up behind the tank again and DPS heal and do that amazing kung fu action we talked about earlier. When he is on the right hand platform, he will use force and verve. In order to deal with this, your group must be split ahead of time to decide who goes into which bubble. What we did was we had four people in the bubble on top of the boss and four people in the second closest bubble, leaving only two people for the furthest bubble, as that way we lose the least DPS and healing while people are running. Now to explain the bubbles. When the boss starts casting force and verve, bubbles will form on the ground like small yellow domes. You must have no more than four people into any one bubble as the bubbles reduce the damage you take from Force and Verve by 40% when you stand in them. However, they will only shield a maximum of four people each. Anyone who enters after the four people will not be protected at all, so you must split the group and assign people to the bubbles ahead of time. There are three bubbles in total. One right on top of the boss, which is best for melee and the tank. One bubble, a small distance away, which we can call the middle bubble. And if you have a melee heavy group, this is best for any surplus melee as well as any ranged DPS or healers. The furthest bubble is about 20 yards away from the boss and you only need two people for this one, which can be any ranged DPSs or healers. Now it's imperative that players get into their assigned bubble and do so quickly as each tick of Force and Verve deals incredible damage. So much so that if you stay out of the bubbles you will most likely die. And even with the 40% damage reduction the bubbles provide healers will have to rotate cooldowns in order to out heal the ridiculous damage. So use things like tranquility for this fight. All players should also use defensive cooldowns to minimize damage. Trust me when I say this hits hard. The damage is all physical, so don't bother with things like anti-magic zone. You need physical damage reduction, temporary health, or some heavy healing. Finally, the platform behind the boss, or the one right at the back of the room, which we will call the back platform, is where the boss will use an ability called Convert, in which he mind controls two players, making them turn against you and rip you several new ones. In order to deal with this, just DPS the mind control players, as the closer you bring them to half health, the higher chance you will break the mind control, and once at half health, you are guaranteed to break the mind control. Be careful with dots here, as they will still be on the players after the effect ends. So either don't apply them at all, or make sure that your healers are cool with dispelling and healing a lot. Now, convert can make for some really bad RNG, but there are some things to note. 1. When used on a player, it will usually make them use defensive cooldowns, so it will activate a Death Knight's blood presence, for example. This is important because you will have to turn it off once you are freed to prevent aggroing the boss. The next thing is, he loves to make priests fear the friends, so priests should waste their fears and have them on cooldown just before a mind control is used. Having the entire raid running around scared is a bad, bad idea. At 40% health, the boss flies into the middle of the room and starts soaking up all the muck. Malay DPS and the tank should run out underneath him, especially the tank as otherwise he will start one-shotting ranged as they are flying in the air after he pulls the whole raid to him. Ranged can stay on the final platform and DPS him until he pulls everyone to him. 
Phase 2 is where you should use Time Warp, as now he can make use of all three abilities, though he won't use Force and Verve or Discs at the exact same time, as they are both channel effects. I recommend using Time Warp during a Force and Verve, as not only will it help your healers heal everyone up, but it's also a really good time to nuke the boss. During this phase, he deals 10% more damage and has 20% more haste, meaning that discs spawn faster. Force and Verve hits like even more of a truck, not to mention that he will be hitting the tank really hard. Basically, now you must apply all that you learned from the previous phase and put it all together into one chaotic phase of trouble. And once you finish off the remaining 40%, he is as dead as dead gets. So enjoy your loot! I hope you enjoyed this guide and that you found it helpful. If you did, then be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe for more. You can also follow me on Twitter. There is a link in the description to make it easy as pie. Now, go kill this boss and enjoy the spoils of war.